Hey guys, I'm going to try to shoot this video again. I've been having trouble with it. It seems like I keep getting interrupted or running long or something of that nature. Anyway, I uh, went to the Matt Capitelli benefit held at Davis Arena by Ohio Valley Wrestling on Saturday night and had a pretty good time and and um, sorry about that but Jake wants to get a seat up here and I'm trying to accommodate him without having him get all over everything how's that buddy you good where you're at okay back to it so on my way to uh, to Davis Arena I stopped by the Great Escape and uh, picked up some stuff wasn't planning on it but uh, just ran in some stuff that uh, needed to come home with me um, I had really gone up there to pick up a free comic book which I got um, it was Batman Day so they were giving away a free comic book it was this one uh, I guess it's Batman Harley Quinn but it the reason I wanted it was because it's the the cover um, is kind of a reproduction of the uh, famous uh, cover for The Dark Knight Returns. Frank Miller, famous Frank Miller story, uh, this time with Harley Quinn's uh, silhouette added. I thought it would look cool in a frame, or maybe I'll just bag it and put it with, uh, put it with my graphic novel. I haven't collected comic books in a long time, but every now and then I find something that I I want. Um, so I picked that up. Then uh, there were a couple magnets there that I thought were really cool. Uh, this is the Batman magnet that I picked up. Uh, the uh, artwork was done by Alex Ross, who is uh, one of my favorite comic book artists. Um, he, he works in paint rather than than drawing and ink and he did one of my favorite favorite graphic novels kingdom come back in the 90s and um, I believe this picture he did some large tabloid size sized um, graphic novels and uh, this was I believe the cover for the Batman graphic novel the other magnet I found was is what I believe is the cover for the uh, Wonder Woman graphic novel. So I thought those were cool. So I picked them up. But what kicked off me picking anything up was I saw this box set on vinyl. And uh, it was cheap and I, I, I had to get it. And uh, then I stuck my nose in the new arrivals and found a couple other albums that I needed to pick up. So one of the albums, yeah, I'm, I don't know if it's OCD or what, but I it bothers me to have a volume two without having a volume one. But I made an exception in this case because of this amazing cover. Check this out. Johnny Cash, the Johnny Cash Collection, is Greatest Tits, Volume 2. Isn't that amazing? It's time for Jake's close-up, apparently. <laughs> Alright, so, but I just... Oh, look, Johnny has a mustache. <laughs> Move your butt. Thank you. All right. So Johnny, that's that's a great picture, and the songs on here are amazing. The boy named Sue, Hey Porter, uh, Big River, Long Legged Guitar Man, Guitar Picking Man, uh, Folsom Prison Blues, Sunday Morning's Coming Down, If I Were a Carpenter, Daddy Sang Bass. Holy cow! What was on Volume One? 
So, pick that up. And then I found this uh, sealed copy of uh, Jesse Coulter, live from Kane's Ballroom. <laughs> okay, Jake. Uh, that's pretty cool. Great songs on it, too. Um, can't nobody do me like Jesus without you. Uh, you were my mountain, I'm not Lisa. Rainy Day Women. Just, uh, it, and it only cost, uh, seven bucks for a sealed, for a sealed copy of this album. All right, so next comes the box set, and it was only eight bucks. Um, just blew my mind. The Hank Williams Treasury. Let's you see. Oops. Isn't that cool? It's on MGM Records. Pull out the inner, the inner folder, and it's, the albums are contained in, in this inner folder, and I thought, but you know, I thought, this, this is not going to be good. At eight bucks for four albums. These albums are going to look like trash. I just knew it. But you know what? I was wrong. These albums are look amazing. They, they need a bath, but they don't look. They're, they're, it's not like they're filthy, and they're, I'm not seeing any scrapes or scuffs. Okay? So three of the albums have this MGM centering. The uh, fourth album has uh, this centering, but they, like I said, they all, they all look amazing. I was very pleased, um, and the song selection is really good um, for Hank Williams Senior. Uh, record set and I'm having a hard time getting this one album to go back in okay I'm not going to put it in right now but I will tell you some of the songs I mean uh, hey good looking's on here uh, be careful of the stones that you throw um, my bucket's got a hole in it cold cold heart uh, my son calls another man daddy. Now there's a country title for you. Um, we live in two different worlds on the banks of the old poncha train. Your cheating heart. Uh, I'm so lonesome I could cry. Uh, why don't you love me? Long gone lo lonesome blues. Um, just a lot of great songs. Um. So very very pleased with that. So after I um, after I finished at the Great Escape, I uh, went to uh, I walked a block, grabbed some bite to eat at, at McDonald's, and then uh, got an Uber out to uh, Davis Arena. Um, so when I got there. You go in, pay for a ticket as normal, but this time when I when I went into the arena, there was a lot in front of the ring. They had a, a line that had a couple tables, and so I threw in a donation and uh, went, kind of went down the line and and got um, got some autographs. 
Um, I threw in a fairly <laughs> pretty good donation, but that was great because it was all going to uh, Matt Capitelli. Uh, he was a, a, I mentioned it in my last video, but I'll tell you again real quick. He was a, um, a winner of WWE Tough Enough. He was training at Ohio Valley Wrestling. Never, I don't think he ever made it to a WWE ring. Before he got there, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He had an operation, and I think it went in remission for nearly 10 years, and now, and, and the first tumor effectively ended his in-ring career. So he moved from, from being a wrestler to uh, teaching wrestlers, and that's what he was doing when, when he was diagnosed with a second tumor. Um, so I've heard that the part of it's inoperable, but he has had a surgery to try to fix, to try to get part of it. So, uh, he was there, he, he looked good, and hopefully it, it will be like Rocco Bellagio, a wrestler, said from the ring Saturday night, he said, when this is all over, it'll be Matt Capitelli to, uh, Cancer Zero. And that's what we're praying for. So, so that's yeah. I don't know what else to say about that. It's he he. I I do remember hearing a speech when he retired from from in ring uh, back in the day, and he talked about his faith then. And and I, I've noticed that some of the shirts. Um, had the scripture about I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So he he is clinging to his faith, and uh, we're going to pray for him and and um, know that that God's sovereign and and will will he'll take care of this. So meet and greet um, as I went through the line, the first person I come up to meet was Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette was the manager for the uh, legendary tag team, the Midnight Express. And, um, boy, it, it tells you something about, about memory, because I mentioned that I had seen... I thought the first time that I, I was in the same place with him was back... At Rupp Arena for a scaffold match between Bill Superstar Dundee and Bobby Eaton. And he was there. But he was the photographer. So why would I have remembered him? The only thing that I can think of is that I've seen the footage of the legendary matches, but scaffold matches involving the Midnight Express, the ones where Jim was involved and uh, took the drop from the ladder because I know he, he injured his knees doing that so um, but he was you know that was the only thing I could think of to talk to him because I'm standing there thinking what am I going to say to the man but, you know it's one of those weird situations so uh, but he was very very nice and you know he's obviously done meet and greets before and so he knows how to how to chat and and um, put people at ease and and um, make it a good experience and and it was it was nice to it was nice to meet him and um, uh, yeah so I got an autographed eight by ten he had several there and I picked this one because it has the uh, Midnight Express in the background, and of course he's holding his infamous t tennis racket. To Dale, your friend Jim Cornette, I thought that was pretty cool. So, I got that one. And then I went down the line, and I met the owner of OV OVW, or the former owner. Well, I, you know, I'm not sure. Was it about a year... A year ago, 
Uh, there was uh, an episode where Danny Davis said that he sold the uh, OVW to uh, uh, one of the broadcasters whose name I am drawing a total blank on. I should know it like I know my own. Um, but I, I'm totally blanking. So, anyway, Danny Davis was one of the, uh, the tag team, uh, the Nightmares. Um, he's the one Davis Arena, of course, is named after. Um, he's a, a short guy. Uh, but I know I was listening to a podcast, Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, not too long ago, and, and Stone Cold said he took a couple of chops from Danny Davis in a match and didn't want any more. He had no no use for getting chops from him. Uh, tough guy, you know, but he put together a really really cool thing in Ohio Valley Wrestling. Uh, then the next guy I met is someone I've seen wrestle on TV quite a bit. Al Snow. And of course he's holding the mannequin head named Head. So, so I actually got um, he signed for Head. Head doesn't have any arms or or hands, so Al signed forehead. Forehead. Okay. Um, anyway, but I'll say this: I don't know what Al is doing as far as training, but he looks great. He, I think, he looks better than he did back in his prime. He looks like he could totally kick somebody's butt. Uh, whatever he's doing is working. Um, very nice guy though. Enjoy talking to him and and uh, he did sit a couple rows in front of me and I saw him getting ready to eat a hot dog. And all I could think about was the time that uh, Big Boss Man fed him his little dog. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else saw those episodes, but. Uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty outrageous, and, oh, wow. So, and then there was one final wrestler there, uh, at the, at the early part of the meet and greet, and, um, he's a, a impact wrestler, uh, rock star spud, and he's a weed little, he's a weed little man, <laughs> But uh, I watched him in the Battle Royal. He's pretty entertaining. I have to keep my eye on him. See what he's... See what kind of wrestler he really is. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, the, the matches, a lot of the matches were... Well, they, I don't think they were really trying to advance storylines that they would normally try to advance through the TV show or the Saturday night specials, but, um, you know, they did, they did, uh, they put on some pretty good matches. Uh, there was a battle royal. There was some, uh, I think there was some tag matches. I know there was a, a fatal four way match with women. Uh, there was a ladder match for the TV title which was won by the pastor of disaster. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was also, oh yeah, Jamin Old Vinci wrestled. Uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time. It's been a while since he's been to OVW. I think he's wrestling Global Force Wrestling right now, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, and there was a heavyweight, well, no, that wasn't a heavyweight title defense. That was just a regular match between Rocco Bellagio and um, 
and Robbie Walker. Robbie Walker, they they kicked it off early in the night. They had had Rocco in the ring, and and Robbie Walker walked out, and they they've been having these T-shirts that say uh, Team Cap for Matt Capitelli, and and Robbie Walker actually walked out in one of those shirts with tape X over Cap. Wow. <laughs> so, they had to have a reason for Rocco, I guess, to be mad at him and want to beat him up. So, they set the match up for later that night. And, and um, it was a pretty physical match. It was entertaining. Uh, I won't say it's the best show I've ever seen at, at uh, from OVW, but it was, it was good. It was good. It was fun. Uh, one other meeting I had was... Um, uh, intermission. Um, it was really hot. It's a commercial. Davis Arena is really a commercial warehouse, and I don't guess they have central air. And Saturday night, it's been here for it being the beginning of autumn and the last week in September. It's been really hot, and Saturday night was no exception. And and um, so I had gone to the uh, concession and gotten a couple of Gatorades and was making my way back when I saw uh, a female wrestler by the name of Rebel. Uh, she was kind of wrapping up with one fan and, and there were there were other wrestlers around the ring and they were all taking pictures and taking donations from Matt and, and uh, they were selling raffle tickets and and I was trying to get one of those, too, because they had a really cool painting of a, of a Macho Man that I thought I'd like to try to win. And uh, I didn't. But uh, anyway, an opportunity made itself available to go up and, and uh, talk to this young lady and, and get a picture with her and... You know, at my age, I, I need to take advantage of what few opportunities I actually have to talk to women and, and, and do it. So without thinking much about it, I did it. I walked over and asked, asked to take a picture and, and uh, gave her a donation. And so we took, we took a picture. I do know that uh, she... Uh, she wrestles for Impact Wrestling. Uh, she has a finishing move called Rebel Yell, which obviously comes from the Billy Idol song, so there's a musical connection right there. Uh, she is gorgeous. Um, so, you know, hey, it was a good time. Um... I think what else what else there was to tell you about that night not a whole lot um, it was just a good night I like going out to the uh, to Davis Arena and seeing the guys wrestle and watching watching the show that they put on knowing that they're working hard to try to, to try to make it big and and uh, support them and and this was a night for a good cause so it was a good time um, and that's that's it. I guess I'll wrap this up. And hope you all have a good night. I'm going to try to uh, upload this and, and edit some pictures into it. And, and uh, we'll see you soon. I've got some other stuff I need to film. So um, that will be coming shortly. You all have a good night. And um, I'll, I'll try to put a link in there. At, in the description, I think I think Rebel has a uh, Twitter, no, not Twitter, um, Instagram account, and and um, that way you all can can see who she is. Um, yeah, so have a good night, and I'll talk to you later.